Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'll be basically speaking about like medicine and um, the journey through medicine, like as a student, who's who, like who's um, a student, what's a reg, what's a consultant, what are blocks. Because some people, I understand that um, some people that do watch my channel aren't necessarily in the medical field or in, or in the health science field but would like to know what these different terms mean so that's what i'll be getting into today and if you're interested you can continue watching guys also please don't forget to like my videos and to please subscribe if you haven't if you're new to my channel okay let's get into the video okay so basically our journey through medical school as um, an undergraduate student is basically six years well, at UCT, I know that at um, different universities, it's a bit, it's shorter. Like I think in the University of Free State, they do um, five years. But here at UCT and at most universities around the country, we do six years of undergraduate training. For anyone who's watching and who's an international student in South Africa, we don't do pre-med degrees. Or, yeah, we don't do that. It's literally after matric. So when I finished with matric, I went straight into um, becoming an undergraduate student studying towards uh, my MBCHB degree. Those six years are divided into um, preclinical and clinical years. So you have three years of preclinical um, work and you have the other three years is basically clinical work. And what I mean about preclinical and clinical work, so the first three years are mostly like um, orientated or um, focused around like your theory so those three years are when you attend like you ah wow so those three years are when you are like attending lectures a lot like first year second year third year you're attending lectures a lot very little um interactions with patients you're still like gaining your clinical skills so i remember in first year second year and third year year so we had like clinical skill sessions so that's when they're teaching us how to examine um, patients like they're teaching us the different systems so like the abdominal um the abdominal examination the central nervous system examination cvs what else do we do yeah so basically in the first three um in the first three years that's what they do it's more theory it's less interaction with patients it's like basically you're in medicine now try and get as much as much information into your brain as much as possible so i remember like I didn't enjoy those years nah like I like reading and everything like that like and studying but I also like like the practical application of whatever I'm doing and so that's why I think I struggled in my preclinical years because we didn't have the practical application of those things so we'd be studying about TB you know but um, and we'd be studying about TB it wasn't really focused on management but like I wouldn't be seeing any patients with TB you know you're studying about heart failure but like you're literally studying like symptoms you're like okay a patient who has a heart who has heart failure has this 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 but i've never seen a patient who has heart failure you know it's like literally everything is in a book that that's what preclinical pre years were like and yeah i don't enjoy them but some people do enjoy them i mean it, it also depends on your personality i'm very much a practical person i like doing things with my hands i learn better that way and then i consolidate um, the information that i've taken in like throughout the day when i come back and then i study literally i remember in uct um the first semester the first semester focuses on like we did chemistry we did physics we did and then we did like um we call it hub but that's basically like I don't, I don't know, like, like in life science, life science is university, if you would say that, but it's more focused on like human, the human body, anatomy, physiology, and things like that. And then like as the years went by, we'd focus like in second year, we'd focus on like, okay, we had anatomy, anatomy lectures, physiology lectures, um, anatomical pathology lectures, we had microbiology, um, we had virology, we had like you know zonkers and so it was basically first three years intense three years it's all about gaining as much knowledge as you can surviving actually it's really about surviving 
Then we move on to the next three years, your clinical years. So your clinical years are focused around now you it, like I think the reasoning behind it is now you have all the knowledge like now you well not all of it but like now you've gained as much knowledge as you could in your preclinical years now it's like the practical application of that knowledge so now this is from fourth year to sixth year now literally 90 percent maybe 95 maybe we can say 90 to 95 percent of your time you spend in the hospital you spend 95% of your time in the hospital seeing patients, discussing patients with um, doctors. Everything is around the patient. Like very, you, you spend very little time actually going to um, lectures or things like that. Everything is around the patient. So any teaching, most teaching in your um, clinical years is around patients. So you, your tats are bedside tutorials. So that, so that means that you have a patient, like a real patient, and the consultant will come and a group of you guys come and then like basically are taught around the patient and the condition that the patient has so that is like my clinical years i enjoy them like i love clinical years because i feel like like that's when i i, I truly feel like a doctor i truly feel like okay this is it feels real like it feels like okay this is what i'll be doing like for the rest of my life i'll be seeing patients i'll be you know so that's your clinical years and then when you get to your clinical years now you do blocks so basically what blocks are is that each speciality is given a set time like a set time frame to teach you whatever skill whatever knowledge that they feel that you should know like and you spend your time literally in that speciality so i remember when we started when we were in fourth i think things have changed now a block is literally eight weeks so from from fourth year, we had eight week blocks. So what that means is basically that, let's say for medicine, when we're doing internal medicine, we had eight weeks where all our time was dedicated to internal medicine. We saw patients only that were in the internal medicine department, you know. So we worked with the internal medicine team. Any meetings that we needed to attend, we attended internal medicine meetings. Everything was about internal medicine. After that block, so that's eight weeks, right? So what week one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you're basically getting as much knowledge around the, the speciality. Week eight, it goes down, it's exams. So that's what blocks are. So it, it, like, for example, um, we also had like a surgery block. So everything, so there'll be like an internal medicine block, a surgery block, um, a gynae, um, gynecology block, obstetrics block. So all those things would be like eight weeks, eight weeks, eight weeks eight weeks I'm doing gynecology after that eight weeks I write exams um maybe um eight weeks I'm doing surgery after those eight weeks I write exams what else did we do um eight weeks I'm doing psychiatry for example and then after those eight weeks I write exams so that's that, the, that's what a block is right however in sixth year things have changed that now our blocks are no longer not all our blocks are actually eight weeks but most of our blocks in sixth year are four weeks so that means I have four weeks to get everything together. So like this year we had, um, what block? Like my elective block was four weeks. Uh, my obstetrics block was four weeks. My surgery block was four weeks. You know, so um, yeah, I think I've explained what blocks are. And I, I hopefully you understand. If you don't, please comment down in the comment section. Then I'll, I'll, I'll explain further. So that's what preclinical years are clinical years and blocks okay now who's who here in the business anyway so you have us as students we are undergraduate students we are at the bottom of the food chain um, according to this hierarchy system but whatever we have as maybe you would have seen with my um access card we have a the number, the year that you're in is literally written on your access card. So I'm in sixth year now, sixth year now, sixth year now. So then like the number six is written on my card. It's just for identification purposes as you walk around the hospital so that they know actually that you're supposed to be in the hospital, that you are actually allowed to be accessing certain parts of the hospital. That's purely for those reasons, not to be bragging and like flexing. Okay. Then you have registrars. So registrars are qualified doctors who are now specializing okay let me take it back so i said we study for six weeks we said, wow we, i said we study for 
six years, right? Then after six years, you have to, you have to do two years of intern of internship, right? So th these two years of internship, you can literally choose anywhere in the country, but like you basically are given, we were given five choices as to where do you want to go? And then the government will place you. You cross your fingers, you pray to God that you get that you get the option that you chose. But anyway, that's internship. Then you have to do one year of community service as well. You choose your options, cross your fingers, pray to God that you get it. You don't know. It is South Africa. Six years of um, medical school undergraduate teaching. Then we have three years, both internship, two years of internship and one year of ComSurf after the, our undergrad. So after nine years, then, okay, now you are a full-on doctor. I mean, after six years, I'm a doctor, but I still need more training. So that, that internship and community service period is like for further training for me to know more, right? So then... Um, and then after community service, you are known as a medical officer. Um, in the public sector, you're known as a medical officer. In the private sector, in the private sector, you're known as a GP, a general practitioner. That's what's that's that on that. Then, as I said, now you have registrars. They are registrars are doctors that have qualified. They are qualified doctors. They've done the internship. They've done their community service and they're now specializing towards becoming whatever, whatever, whatever department they've chosen. So like, for example, I want to do orthopedics. So once I've done my community service and once I've done my internship, I will be a registrar in the orthopedics department because then I want to become an orthopedic surgeon. So that's what a registrar is. Then the last one, the top, 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 the top, like according to hierarchy, then you have your consultant. So your consultant, the consultant finished medical school. They did their two years internship. They did their one year comp serve. They specialized, they did their registrarship and they have qualified. A consultant is a specialist. So they specialize in that particular field. So at the end of six years, we all like doctors, but a specialist like specialized. I don't know if I'm making sense, but specialized in that field, prof, um, when I was doing my elective, prof is an orthopedic surgeon. That means that he specializes in orthopedics, you know, so that's what a consultant is. You have different types of consultants um, because there are different types of departments within medicine. So you would have a dermatology um, consultant. You would have your internal medicine consultant. A cardiologist is a consultant. An uh, orthopedic surgeon is a consultant. A general surgeon is a consultant else a hepatologist is a consultant like anyone who has specialized and is a specialist is a consultant in the public sector i think in america they call them attendants attending or something like that something you know that word from grace but that's what they call them there here we call them consultants so that's what it means so consultants usually run firms they are like registrars um, are under consultants and registrars have to report to consultants. Um, yeah, I, I hope this um, makes sense to everyone. And I hope it's cleared up a lot of confusion when I keep speaking about consultants, registrars, interns, and things like that. So I want to be an, orthopedic cons an orthopedics consultant. Okay, guys, I hope this video has been very helpful. Um, yeah, and if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions related to medicine, related to our journey, what we do, um, please comment down in the comment section and I will try and answer them as much as I can. And if I can't, I'll make a video on it. I also plan to do a video. I've, I've, I hear you guys. I really do. I hear you. Like people have been commenting, saying like, how do I study and things like that. I should make a video on how I study. I hear you. I will make a video on that. It's just that, like, obviously it's been a new year. I've been um, changing a few things here and there about how I study. So I didn't want to make a video prematurely. But now I feel like I kind of I kind of have a good understanding of how I study. It's towards the end of the year. So I'll make that video. Anyway, guys, I've been rambling on. I hope you enjoyed this video again, again, again. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Those of you guys who haven't subscribed and you new, 
to my channel welcome um and please 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 subscribe to my channel okay guys bye see you in my next video